DeKalb County has a rich, complex African-American political history. The power of its legacy is seen in its stellar educational system, cultural outlets, and clean communities. But it wasn't always this way. Now, DeKalb County at the time was nothing like it is now. Let me just say that, because it was rural, and you had these little pockets of communities where African Americans lived. County Line, Stone Mountain, and Lithonia, and Linwood Park. During the early 20th century, segregation was the law of the land in DeKalb. The lack of political power left African American communities bankrupt, with no economic, social, or law enforcement protection. We had here in Georgia, they were Democratic primaries, but they were, quote, white primaries. You couldn't vote except in a national election. They had laws uh, where they required you to pay a poll tax. They had literacy test, a registrar in some instances might ask you, uh, who's the judge of the uh, of a court in Savannah, as opposed to who's the judge over in DeKalb County. Not far from DeKalb here, which was which is a pretty large county, two soldiers and their wives were were lynched and mobbed in Monroe, Georgia. The two men were ex-soldiers. That's that's how they were turned home to. Sadly, many African Americans in DeKalb gave up hope that they would ever see justice in their lifetimes. That is, until a preacher from Columbus, Georgia named Primus King and the power of the black church changed the trajectory of Georgia's political history. Primus King sued the state of Georgia against the all-white Democratic primary and won. The role of the church in the community was the meeting place whether it was to help start an organization like the NAACP or do voter registration or improvement for the community. One of the most active members of the community in terms of voter registration was Deacon Epster, a member of Thankful Baptist Church. He encouraged us, not just the members of the church, but the community, that we should register so we can vote. And to make this be a very successful uh, drive, both for NAACP and voter registration, somebody in the group suggested that we should invite somebody like Jackie Robinson, and we invited him to come to the city of Decatur, Thankful Baptist Church, to be our speaker. The following year, he came to speak at a big dinner in downtown Atlanta, and at that event, I took my program and asked him if he would autograph it. So all these years later, I still have my program. This is one of my prized possessions. The Ku Klux Klan, they were active. The last public meeting, I would say, that they had on the square was about 1960. Three. And for me, and I think for some of the other neighbors, we were not afraid anymore. It was some, 1962, there were no uh, public uh, facilities integrated you know, in the city. So I decided that um, with my friends and, you know, that we would take on the public library. And so my friend Dorothy Scott and I were the first two African-American women, period, to get cards. And we had these two friends who was two white ladies. One was on the inside of the building and one was on the outside of the building in her car. So if something happened, she said she wanted to 
be able to get us away from the situation. She referred to it as the getaway car. As the civil rights movement gained momentum in DeKalb during the 60s, more and more African Americans boldly heeded the call to serve their communities without fear and with pride and honor. I ran for commissioner for the city of Decatur, and I became the first African American to be elected for the city of Decatur in Decatur's 160 plus years and that was in uh, 1984. The commissioners decided that I should be the mayor from 93 to 99 when I retired. It was significant to see us vote for state representatives like James E. Dean. It was significant to see where your vote could help elect moderate uh, white people. And you start seeing results by progressive white people who were elected. Leona Levitan, she was a Democrat. Bob Gu, he was a Republican, but, but he had some progressive ideas. And when you see judges come in and they're fair-minded, there were some judges in the cab. It used to scare people just to go in there. In 2009, President Obama became the first African-American president of the United States of America. His presidency signaled the fulfillment of past hopes and the bold dreams of future generations. The most bursting with pride that I had about President Obama, my mother, who was 99 years old, and her neighbor, who had never voted, and the two of them, 90-some years old, were able to vote for President Obama. That was just so special. I was thrilled to see President Obama win. And I thought about here in DeKalb, where uh, J former Judge J. Oscar Mitchell almost sent Dr. King to his death when the trumped-up charges were made about him and that uh, traffic ticket. If he had gone to uh, Reedsville, there's a good chance we, we would have never seen him again. Yes, DeKalb's African-American political legacy has certainly come a long ways. The future looks even brighter, but there is still work to be done. Just like over the past years, we've seen how important it is to vote. You have to get your voice heard, and the only way it's going to be heard is if you elect someone who's going to have some modicum of care about you. We got a lot of work to do. We've done a lot, but we got, we, we got a lot to do. And we got to have people who are committed to wanting to correct it. So if we take the young people who ran in this last election, like Stacey Abrams, they changed a lot about the system. Georgia will not ever be the same again on election. These young people are the future. They're my future. They're your future.